rather nice early Bronze Age beaker here. Um, and my challenge is to get it nicely packed up over the Christmas period so we can come at it in January when we've got the specialists in place to do the kind of testing that we want to do on it to try and find out if there are any residues inside it. It's still encased in mud as it was when it came off site. Here it is. In the bubble wrap it came in from site. We need to keep it damp and we need to keep it cool. Uh, so once I've packed all this up, it'll hop off to the fridge where it'll live over Christmas. But first of all, I've got to transfer it from the rather sort of rough and ready packaging that they had to use on site into something that's going to keep it nice and stable and secure. So, I have a nice clean box, some packing materials, some acid-free tissue as well, a bit of water and enough kit to label it. Here's the new box, same size as the old one. Got the tags in there on the labels, the tags will transfer over to the new box. First of all, I just line it with some air pockets. There, will do nicely. A little bit of bubble wrap to cushion the vessel as well. Just to give it a nice snug fit inside this new container. Check and approximate that the size of the vessel isn't too large for the hole I've made. And that it's all going to fit nice and snugly and the lid's going to go on securely. We want it to be airtight, we don't want it drying out. Now, our acid-free tissue, got lots of small sheets of this. The pot itself and the kind of clay it's in are still very damp. We don't in any way want to make it more wet than it already is, but we don't want it drying out either. So I'm just going to dampen these sheets of acid-free tissue. Just slightly over here and use those to form a little bed in the bubble wrap. Another sheet I think and that will do nicely. Dip it in the water. Nice and damp but not soaking wet. What we don't want is for the paper to kind of dissolve and end up sticking to the pot. So, got to be careful about how wet you get it. And there is a nice damp acid free bed for the pot to sit in. Now, my next challenge is going to be lifting this pot. In the soil block it's in. As you can see if I just tilt it up to have a look. The pot is pretty well complete although there are a few other bits of beaker that were scattered elsewhere within the feature but you can see here this large shirt on the back has come away. The pot's been crushed by the weight of the soil on top of it over the last well, more than 4,000 years. So I've got to lift this without doing any more damage and get it into our nice little bed here and then cover it over. Let's have a look. See how much of this packaging in here I can unwind. And the trick is to get right underneath. Underneath that vessel, so just test it very, very gently. There is still some mud clinging to the outside, so I've got to get my hand underneath that soil block a little bit that way, make sure I've got absolutely all of it. And that there aren't any stress points 
for a start to lift. And I can see here, as I'm lifting, that there's a point where a sherd at the back part of the rim is splaying and coming in two. That's an existing break, but as soon as I lift it, it's going to sort of come apart a little bit more. So I'm trying to get my finger under there to hold it in place. And under here. Come on. Let's just see. Right. There we go. And lift. And place. Unfortunately, the hole is just the right size <laughs> and the pots come out pretty well in one piece. There was one of the fragments of pottery there that was clinging to the outside of the vessel on the underside. Looks to belong to the same vessel though, again, sort of crushed down and separated. That's in the soil that was surrounding it. Now all of that soil is gonna be kept and retained um, along with all the rest of the soil from the feature. We're particularly interested in the soil inside of the pot and not just the soil, but the kind of residues of whatever it may have contained that have seeped into the porous body of the earthenware vessel itself. So that will be collected up, including the stuff that's all over my hands. Now, all I need to do is make it more secure inside this bed with a little bit more packing of acid-free tissue around the sides to stop it separating any further. And dampen it slightly. Not too much. And I'm going to use this just to fill the gaps around the outside in there. In there. And one more along the side and down the base. There we go. Final sheet on top. Down. It's okay. And lay it on. Double check vitally that none of the pot is sticking up over the top. It'd be embarrassing having neatly got it in there to squash the whole thing with the lid, but no, that's fine. The label, very important. You never know what's going to happen to the outside. Um, labels can fall off, stickers can fall off, so always make sure you've got a nice neat label on the inside of the box as well as the outside. Clean lid. Make sure it's sealed all the way around. And it's a good tight fit, which that one is. And then finish it off with a couple more labels on the outside of the box.
and then that should be nice and safe over Christmas until we come back to it in the new year to sample it. Ideally, you want to do this excavation as soon as possible. You certainly don't want to be leaving it more than a couple of weeks. These labels contain the codes that tell us not only which site the pot came from, but also exactly whereabouts on the site it came from, so the archaeological context. They also contain this number in a triangle, I'm just popping on, that's the small find number. Now, it's odd to call it a small find, it's not particularly small, but um, that just denotes the find that we've registered specially, so we've marked the position with the GPS, we know exactly down to the centimetre where this pot has come out from. All the other artefacts from the grave have different small find numbers. So what we're able to do then is plot very accurately exactly whereabouts in this particular feature things have come from. And lastly a couple of labels just to reinforce the point that it's very fragile. And there we have it. One early Bronze Age beaker ready for the fridge.